Hello and welcome to the Winning Post, powered by the Serum Institute of India in association with the Delton Casinos. I am Andira Lalwani here at the Mumbai Racecourse. First and foremost, a very, very happy New Year to all of you. The year 2016 brings with it exciting times. The Asian Racing Conference, which for the first time will be held in India, and of course the rest of the Indian Classics. But first up, a quick look at some of the racing from last weekend. It was a warm December day in Mumbai for these nine two-year-old horses to run their maiden Indian horses 1,400 meters race at the Mahalakshmi Racecourse. With some of the millions about to kick off, a quality field entered the paddock to stamp their credentials over a trip that is testing at this age for these thoroughbreds. Bold March in the silks of the late Dr. Ramaswamy was ridden by Sandesh and trained by Karthik Ganapati. He had worked well during the week and looked very much the part in the paddock as the favourite. His lesser preferred stable mate, smart and noble, had the benefit of a race and would have Bhavani Singh in the saddle. Trombone was another who'd worked well and in the silks of Jeffrey Nagpal would have the services of Dashrat Singh to guide him home. The contenders soon left the parade ring and made their way to the starting gates before coming under the starter's orders. And they're away and uh, racing for the Justin Wala Gold Cup. Quite a fair start this is by all the runners and as the field settles down it's a command performance in the centre is the leader from Trombone hugging the whale been tracked on the outside there by comic timing with Smart and Noble in fourth spot as a past the 1200 meter marker wide of the track never say no Clementi in the blue and white is in the centre on the outside Bold March running a little erratic after that is Roman Gold as a past the 1000 meter marker last of all is Wild Horn command performance just a Shade in front of a comic timing in the center. Never say no on the outside as a run past the 800. Two and a quarter length behind the smart and noble being tracked there by Clementi on the outside, making a slight forward move. Bold marches wide up the track. Then there's Trombone, Wild Horn, and Roman Gold. Round the turn and into the street, command performance comes in on first, just about half in front of a comic timing is the one ranging up on the outside in third there, Smart and Noble, after that is Clementi, Bold March is now beginning to make a forward move, but it's command performance in just the shade in front of a Bold March is the one flying on the stand side, comic timing in the center, then there's Smart and Noble, but Bold March has stolen the march, is about two and a half lengths ahead of uh, command performance and this trombone and smart and noble but uh, bold march is going to make it from the stable mate smart and noble trombone third with the money then this command performance comic timing this was the first time bold march was running a few other experienced horses but he missed the kick uh, made up ground and he won well it's a mark of a good horse hope he continues to keep us proud well we'll take it one at a time see how he comes out of the race and probably one of the big races hopefully Bold March won impressively and looks to be a sloppy juvenile with bigger race targets in the future. His stablemate was possibly the most promising of the pack and is one to follow. The Jivaji Rao Sindhya Trophy is a Grade 3 race run over 1,800 meters. With just four runners in the field, the 2015 renewal looked to be a match race between Shivalik Showers and Booker Jones. Shivalik Showers from Kuji Kathrak's yard would race in Nirmal Singh silks, while Booker Jones from Ataule stable would carry the Nanuri silks. The pair had last met in Pune, where Shivalik Shahs had prevailed by a length. With the same weight difference again, most gave the edge to Shivalik Showers, even while conceding it would be close. Past the 1200 meter mark at a decent clip here. Shivalik Shah is maintaining about two lengths over Booker Jones. A gap about seven, eight lengths for the back. There's Lori Turner, the two and a half behind his Mount Batten. 
Racing past the 1000 meter marker, the pace picking up slightly. Shiva Liksha is about a length and three quarters in front of Buka Jones, right on the tail. A gap of about five, six lengths for the back. There's Lorita, another three away is Mountbatten as they cross the 800. Shiva Liksha is in a start to finish mission, is about a length and a quarter in front of Buka Jones. A gap of about three and a half, four lengths for the back. There's Lorita, another two away is Mountbatten as they come past the 600 meter marker and begin to negotiate the home turn. Shiva Rikshas about a length and a half in front of Booker Jones and these two are about five lengths clear of Laurita. Then there's Mountbatten on the outside with about 400 meters more to run. Shiva Rikshas has gone ahead about two lengths in front of uh, Booker Jones under the stick. Another five, six lengths for the back of the other two with about 250 meters more to run. Shiva Rikshas still maintaining about a length and a half in front of Booker Jones trying to come up on the outside. About 150 meters more to run. It's Shiva Rikshas from the fast finishing Buka Jones on the outside Shiva Likshas from Buka Jones three quarters between them Shiva Likshas just about holds on half a length in front at the winning post Shiva Likshas wins the Maharaja Jiva Rao Sindhya trophy Shiva Likshawar is a is a very good horse he is the highest rated horse in among the field and he carrying the top weight 59 kgs and he giving all 6 kg more than all the horses his form also is very good because he won in Pune also start to finish here also he finished third behind to Kausar and Kausar is the champion horse in the Royal Western India before the race it's, my trainers told me take a jump go to the front because in, horse also like same thing and I went to the front and I judged the pace and last 800 meter increase in pace and just keeping keeps going on and he has maintained that verdict always to Booker John and he beat Booker John in Pune also and same verdict he beat in here also that in he is the very such a honest horse. Shivalik Shahs is a hard horse to catch once he gets to the front. He was able to stretch away nicely in the straight and hold off Booker Jones who looked to be running at him. Time now for a quick break here on The Winning Post. When we return, we talk about the issue of safety in this sport and methods to ensure it. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us here on The Winning Post. Now on the 22nd of December 2015, the entire racing fraternity was plunged into shock and despair at the death of DK Ashish. The young jockey had a tragic accident whilst riding, putting a very premature end to his extremely short life. Those that knew him miss him terribly, while the others remember him very fondly. Uh, he was one of my closest cousins someone who I could share everything with and uh, it is a real tragedy that he's not with us anymore. He'll be missed by all of us and he'll always be in our hearts forever. DK was my cousin and in our family all, all, all our cousins are very close and he obviously was uh, very close to us. It's hard for us to believe that he's not there just now. Today when we entered the weighing room, you know, he sits next to me in the weighing room also and uh, it, it was it was uh, really uh, sad that I couldn't see him there, I couldn't hear his voice. He was really cheerful, uh, joking all the time, and uh, he was very famous for his smile. Everyone knows that, and uh, it's it's really tragic that something like this has happened. We I've lost a brother and a very dear friend, and the whole racing fraternity is missing him. We just. Uh, I, I'd like to say that he is there in our thoughts, prayers, and our heart, and uh, he will be missed always. DK Ashish was clearly one of our upcoming boys, well liked by the fraternity. The best quality was that he was always smiling, very humble, won two of the topmost races in Mumbai last year. It was one of those tragic freak accidents, you know, many jockeys fall off and they know how to fall, so it's just a hand of fate that killed him. It's very sad, of course. DK Ashish, what can I say? We are all heartbroken. Uh, he has ridden a couple of races for me, winners for me. I still remember him, uh, him uh, riding gold glamour in a million. He came and won and he said, Sir, this is your top filly. 
and uh, off the horse also he was a very jovial chap never uh, got upset with anybody well behaved well mannered it's very unfortunate uh, that uh, god took him away from us so early dk ashish rode for me with a lot of success a great boy a gentleman smiling all the time rarest of rare qualities in a jockey everyone all his jockey friends everyone really really misses him today he was a gentleman to the core pk was always smiling no matter what the problem no matter how uh, his day had gone he always had a smile at the end of it and that's something that we'll always always miss uh, extremely talented uh, young rider i think uh, he just needed to hone his skills to some extent and he would have been right at the top well dk ashish uh, was retained by the stable and he rode for us last year uh, in this pune season i had found him to be very sort of quiet humble soft spoken boy uh, diligent in his work a bit unlike the naredus i would say who are rather flamboyant in the other sense but uh, he's a very nice boy and um, you know i have nothing but uh, good words to say about him it was very unfortunate what happened i'm really sorry for his family and his, his close kin who have all been uh, closely associated with me at some point of time so i can only send them that i i'm truly sorry for what has happened unfortunate well dk ashish was a very promising uh, jockey and uh, i personally liked him very much and i think he would have done lot more if not he could have been another pace in the making but now it's unfortunate that he's no more we'll always think of him as a good boy and an honest boy dk ashish was one of the most upcoming jockeys of rwitc it's very sad that we have lost him let's hope and pray that he goes to heaven and and we all will miss him a lot DK Ashish it was a sudden accident in the race where I won the oaks and it was a very very sad news that he passed away and he is not with us right now he was a dear friend to me and I'm going to miss him all the time all every day because morning in the work he used to work with me the track work in the jockey room we used to play around make jokes fun of each other he used to never get angry he was always smiling and joyful guy i will really miss him yeah he is good friend of mine and he is the very good person and very good rider one day before he fall bad in calcutta one day before he said to me please play with me football you know i said i am tired i am not playing with you you play then he is laughing too much with me that's why he always i am uh he is the i'm come for the race in jockey room always i'm missing him but i'm i'm not believe believe firstly fall he is fall and he is he's die that's i'm so sad about his i heard his story and after that he was a very nice boy very good jockey and i used his services quite a bit i remember him very fondly he was uh, is really unfortunate for this accident because uh, he was an upcoming boy and he had been at one he had won a few group races of late and uh, he was showing a lot of promise and unfortunately it happened too soon in his life dk ashish started his career with me he was my apprentice spent 3 years with me he was a very nice boy very hard working he used to spend a lot of time with the horses in the stables and a thorough professional a little laid back in attitude but a very good person at heart clearly loved by many and with a promising career before him the abrupt end to dk ashish's life has brought forth a question that is possibly in the subconscious of every jockey and in fact possibly in the subconscious of everybody related to this sport that of safety and how it constantly needs to be addressed well the jockeys now wear protectors many other gear which they don't but arising out of this we have to find most of the fatal injuries are head injuries so is the body protector won't help so we have to find internationally 
whether there are any superior type of helmets or what is done in international jurisdictions which we have already placed before the stewards to find out and it has to be a top we are having the Asian Racing Conference here in a few weeks we will raise this subject at the stewards conference to learn what the other countries are doing and hopefully we'll be able to make riding a far more easy experience we must also realize that there are millions of races run over the years the number of deaths are very small in compared to that so it's not as dangerous as it looks but that doesn't mean we should not take steps to improve safety which will be topmost of our agenda safety is always uh, paramount in a rider's mind because you do understand how dangerous uh, the whole sport is. Uh, at the same time, it's, it's very, very important for you to assess the kind of horse you're riding as well as assess the other horses in the race for their, for their soundness because you, you're riding a race uh, amongst others. You're not riding in isolation. So you must know the condition and the kind of uh, condition of horses in the field uh, have. That's very important. You need to try and find out as much as you can about the field that you're in. So safety is a big issue in horse racing, uh, especially for the jockeys who go out there and you know, risk their lives every single day. Now, um, you know, great strides has been made in safety right from the time when um, a very young Karl Umriga had his accident atop Vasudha to where we are today. You know, you've got some pretty good body protectors, you've got helmets, uh, but these need to be compliant. And, you know, the European standards are basically where we need to be. Today's body protectors that are being used end up protecting the body, but unfortunately, I think we need to do more to protect the neck and the spine. Now, this is a bit of a double-edged sword because unlike in motorsport where you can protect the neck, it's not easy to do so in horse racing because when you fall off a horse, the jockey should have the ability to tuck his head in so that he can roll. Now, that can't be done if your neck is braced up. So that's been a bit, that's been a bit difficult, uh, you know, for scientists and uh, people associated with safety in horse racing to actually achieve. There are basically three types of helmets. One of them is specifically used in high speed horse racing. And generally, you need to ensure that your helmet is safety compliance. It does end up saving lives. Uh, but you also must keep replacing your helmet. I think one of the big mistakes that, uh, uh, you know, and often because it cannot be afforded, this is, a, you know, expensive equipment, uh, you need to keep changing your helmet because it, there is regular wear and tear from use. I think the onus for this lies with the authorities. And I think they should make it a point to get the correct safety equipment for jockeys who necessarily cannot uh, afford it. Now, that if that means putting together a financial plan based on uh, a structure that involves docking commission or doing or what or, or you know whatever it is, putting together a financial plan, buying uh, financial instruments, whatever it is, that's up to the authorities to decide. But I think the onus clearly lies on them. New, new technology and innovation has been made. Uh, you've got new types of body protectors, uh, but so and most recently a body protector that um, you know has an airbag kind of an effect. But that hasn't been successful in horse racing. One is it's bulky to wear, but more importantly, uh, there are cases where it's actually been known to explode. So you know while while it's uh, a process that's constantly moving along. Uh, towards a road of safety, I don't think we are entirely there yet where you can prevent deaths altogether. Now, you know, no sport is entirely safe. You even know that a, a, a cricketer can die from getting hit by a cricket ball. It happens in motorsport. But I think you have to keep doing as much as you can to eliminate the risk. Most of your other injuries, uh, most, most jockeys that uh, do get injured. Primarily, you'll find that the types of injuries they receive are broken collarbones, uh, broken legs, broken limbs. Uh, that's that's primarily a lot of what happens. What happened, unfortunately, recently with DK Ashish, I feel was a, it was a freak accident. I don't, you know, I don't think it's the norm, uh, but certainly something for us to study, analyze, 
no knee jerk reactions i think it's important for us to truly understand and analyze what needs to be done and implement it over a period of time to ensure that our jockeys are safer at the end of the day i'd like to say one thing uh, you know to punters owners people who are watching it from the stands let's not forget these guys are risking their lives these are animals they're riding not machines every time you place a bet on a horse and say oh he should have gone here or he should have gone there uh, it's not that easy these are animals you can't take risks with your life and it's it's not a switch you just turn on and shoot into a gap or a hole it doesn't work like that i think constantly every time a jockey is blamed for doing something i think we should ask ourselves what was the risk had he actually uh, or were he actually to have done that lots to think about there we're going to slip into a quick break here on the winning post we'll return with some track work from thursday so stay with us Welcome back. You're watching the Winning Post, part by the Serum Institute of India, in association with Delton Casinos. Time now to head to some track work. Have a look at how the horses have worked on Thursday for their spurts. And that's all we have for you this week on the winning post remember if you've missed anything at all you can always catch it on our youtube channel also on rwitc.com and of course do follow mohit lalwani on twitter for all his tips so goodbye may the horse be with you we hope you have a safe and a happy new year in fact we're leaving you with some of the wishes for the new year from the racing fraternity goodbye happy new year wishing everyone a safe happy healthy new year all the best happy new year to everyone i wish everyone more happiness more prosperity and above all good health happy new year to everybody and hope everybody is really happy happy new year uh, to all all witc viewers have a nice year ahead new year always keep smiling that's what it is that will take you a long way as far as your life is concerned keep smiling very happy and prosperous happy new year 2016 i wish happiness for the new year for everybody wishing everybody a bright new year ahead yeah i would like to wish all of you happy new year i wish all the punters a good luck on the new year's day i want to wish everyone a safe and happy 2016 and great winnings in the new year that comes here yeah? a very happy and prosperous new year 
wish everybody a very, very happy new year. A very happy and prosperous new year 2016. Drive safe, be careful. Well, I hope all goes well for the new year. That's all, all I can say. Wishing everyone health, wealth and prosperity. Let go things and don't expect things from people. Enjoy life.